Hi guys, this is Rishi. I'm a co-founder uh, at Wishfin.com, India's largest B2C uh, marketplace. Uh, we help consumers take uh, responsible financial decisions. I mean, part of this organization as a co-founder from day one in 2015, uh, backed by Franklin Templeton and Ram Shrira, uh, we help uh, consumer take uh, responsible financial decisions. Uh, it's been uh, fun to be part of such an elite uh, gentlemen, and we want to discuss how Asian fintech uh, companies are behaving, what is happening in Asia in terms of fintech. Uh, we will take reviews across on that front. Uh, and first, uh, I would like to go across and every- want everyone to introduce themselves. And I will, uh, you know, start, uh, you know, from uh, from Kim. Yeah. Um, nice to meet you guys. Uh, my name is Cam Holson, CEO of Everest. I'm involved in a number of businesses. Uh, one that I would like to consider the most important one is a business that I actually spoke about it earlier this year at the Horasus. Uh, it's a venture, we call it DECO, stands for Decentralized Company, where the focus is to create a new type of partnership between people and companies so that people could actually achieve building a more uh, long-lasting, sustainable company and solving a more complex problem. I've been fortunate to get to know a lot of people that have done a lot in their you know, life. And our goal is to bring those people together to create a new type of entities, a new type of corporation, maybe a mega corporation, we call it. That's at the nutshell is what we do. Great, great. Uh, I would like to go to Kim uh, to introduce himself. Yes, uh, thanks, Rishi. Uh, apologies for uh, for the late arrival. Had a few technical issues, um, <clears throat> and we're just introducing ourselves in our company at this stage. Um, our company, Nova Finance Group, is a, a non-bank bank lender in Australia. Uh, we fund SMEs. Ninety-nine percent of our work is in Australia. And we don't lend against the property. We uh, we provide trade finance, whether it's invoice finance, supply chain finance, some type of working capital. Um, we uh, w- this this panel is about fintech. If I could make the observation uh, when we discussed this on the on last weekend, uh, the fintech opportunity in some Asian countries, I think, is far greater than the opportunities here in Australia, particularly on a consumer level. A lot of the conferences we've been to are heavily targeted towards consumer, and that's quite understandable when you have a a country or jurisdiction that uh, doesn't have a a highly developed banking system or more particularly has a lot of individuals that don't don't have bank accounts. And these things, mobile phones have have been a game changer in that regard. The other thing I think that I'd like to throw in uh, to the, the melting pot for discussion is the definition of fintech because it means different things to different people. To some yeah. people, fintech, it's just about trading shares and to others, it's about wealth management. To some, it's about payments. Um, the area where it, it, it interests us is in verifying transactions that we're funding. Uh, right. So in our business, there's more f- changing things yeah. differently. Yeah. It is. Um but uh, not as significantly as, as, as it is, is changing uh, societies that are underbanked and now have access to mobile phones. Yeah. Uh, I would, uh, you know, now like a Cam to introduce himself. I would now like Cam uh, um, to introduce himself. Oh, actually, I did... Uh... I think I yeah. did introduce myself. Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, so I would want Motoya to introduce, introduce himself. Sorry. No problem. Um, yeah. So, well, um, I'm Motoya. I'm based in Japan, Tokyo. I've been, um, I, I run a company called North Village Investment. I've done so since uh, roughly this time last year. Um, before that, I was uh, in, in different private equity uh, fund managers, uh, including Macquarie Bank, uh, HQ Capital, uh, and, and some Japanese fund managers, and mostly through fund of funds, secondaries, uh, and co-investments as well. 
um, after I became independent, I'm trying to uh, raise a private equity secondaries fund. I've launched one, and I'm um, I'm I'm hiring a team as we speak. Um, my relationship, well, my relationship with um, fintech uh, is uh, with a company called Luca, uh, a company that I jointly incubated with a prominent venture capital called Headline. Uh, we invested roughly half and half into the company with with some stake by held by the uh, the CEO who came from Blackstone to read uh, to run the company. I'm um, I'm involved as a co-founder. The business is uh, I, I think for some of you guys uh, it might be familiar to say uh, it's it's a kind of a Japanese version of iCapital or Moonfair. Uh, that's based in Berlin. Uh, so it's basically a, a running a digital platform that connects alternative funds and uh, investors that are smaller than institutional level. Um, there's uh, no business of that sort in, in Japan. Uh, the business is emerging in Asia, uh, mainly in Singapore and Hong Kong. Uh, we are uh, building up an alliance with one of the Asian players to jumpstart in the platform business and um, access Japanese investors, first through um, the likes of private bankers, uh, trust banks and securities brokers, firms, wealth managers, um, which would provide a bridge uh, between us and um, the, uh, the, the more retail side of the investors. So we are just starting. Um, right. And the company's uh, established in, in 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 July, so that's my relevance with the fintech industry. Right. So you're the go-to man if any of one of us are looking to fund and fundraise to Japanese investors. Yeah, of so, course. <laughs> <laughs> so I would uh, want go to Juko uh, wanted to introduce himself. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, I'm Joko Ahvenainen. Uh, I'm serial entrepreneur. I have started many companies. Uh, also in fintech area, and actually one of my companies is this uh, Crow VC Group, that is especially holding company in fintech area. Uh, we have been in fintech uh, over ten years, so that we actually started the world first equity crowdfunding service for startups in two thousand nine. Uh, wow. But we actually came to conclusion in three years that equity crowdfunding for startups is not very uh, great business or it's very complex business. And uh, and we, we actually uh, got rid of that business, uh, but we have had many other uh, companies in fintech area. For example, one of the first uh, cloud-based uh, API first uh, back office for finance services so that you are able to get everything from uh, KYC, uh, payment solutions, uh, uh, customer accounts, and so on uh, from this back office. Uh, we have worked uh, with the real estate uh, uh, investment models and lending models uh, quite a lot uh, implemented also some uh, lending, lending services, even some uh, commodity investment models uh, very globally so that uh, that actually some of these companies have been based in Silicon Valley, but then we have uh, had uh, some some businesses also in in Europe, especially in London, and also some some companies in in Asia, uh, especially in Hong Kong, and actually we had also one joint venture in India. So so that's seen quite a lot in fintech during the last ten years, and seen also that some some things are very challenging and something things are very promising so that uh, it's uh, it's it's not the yeah. business but it is very very much uh, uh, also has opportunities yeah, yeah i think it's uh, loads of experience and you know starting that early would have you know great insights on on the fintech industry i would like to go to jivo to introduce himself yeah Hi, my name is Jiu. Uh, actually, my business is in China, but right now I'm in Eastern Coast of, you know, in North America. But anyway, so, uh, I, I have been in, I, I pretty new in Fandac. I have been in, uh, investment and healthcare IT for a long time. It's very easy for us to transfer our technological capability 
especially you know uh, the direction to our fun tech so uh we are pretty new we built our company in uh sanya i'm not very sure do you know that actually that is, there are some special or uh, you know in china there are always a special zone they give some special policies so, so that you can run some business over there so we built up company in sanya and uh, as well um, you know there are there are some uh restriction you know for 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 uh, fundraising this kind of thing we also build up company in states so we try to uh, leverage uh, both sides um we are uh, uh, focusing on, on fintech for a couple of years and uh, uh, we have invested uh, uh, some company and uh, uh, especially on you know we we, 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 we building up some unique at least we think we are unique business model um, to help everyone, especially we leverage our capability to incubate um, the investor target. So, um, yeah, um, I, I would be very happy uh, to join. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you, guys. I think that was a great intro from each of you, and you've given uh, me a good thought process how to, you know, uh, understand and how to take this forward and put this uh, things together. Uh, the idea of the, uh, the uh, you know, the session is about what's happening in fintech in Asia and what we can bring into table and make people understand who are watching or maybe who will watch it uh, after it's put on social media, etc. on that front. Uh, I would run through the certain sets of questions. Uh, I would want everyone to respond in the same way when we, uh, the way we've interacted across on that front, uh, giving free time for anyone to, you know, take some time across on that front, just explaining that front. So just talking about fintech uh, and fintech in Asia uh, from an introduction point of view, my understanding to fintech is that uh, as it was very clear, there, there, are, there are so many legs to fintech from payments uh, to, 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 you know, to credit, to lending, to investments, uh, to stock trading, etc. Uh, so something which was uh, by regulation uh, limited to certain companies, uh, the tech ensured, uh, you know, that uh, the access from a customer uh, and the service uh, went to a middle guy, uh, which became aggregators, and then they became traders, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, earlier, it was we you know about from 30, 40 years ago, it was given as licensed. All these processes, which we call fintech, were under license regimes. Uh, the the other angle to this is, you know, in the country, uh, there's a country in India, there like or in Asia, there are uh, there are restrictions, etc., or there are government controls on on what you can do and what you can't do, uh, which we will discuss later across but just to give you a total scope uh, the first i wanted to understand what do you see the fintech market total uh, you know the first point is how do you see the fintech market in asia uh, and what do you see how it growing in the next two three years that's i want to view across all people yeah yeah jump in even though i'm not in asia i feel like fintech is global and one of the reason crypto has become so interesting is because it's a cross-border currency that reduces the friction and the cost to do any type of commerce and i think what i see as uh, you know what happening on the asia is really impacting the entire world this is a world that we all connected together and as you know uh, Mateo mentioned when he engaged with someone from blackstone uh, we sold the car to one of the founding members of Blackstone. Yoko mentioned about being a serial entrepreneur. What we do through the DECO has a lot of uh, features to help entrepreneurs be successful. And of course, you know, uh, Kimball mentioning about what he has done on uh, the startup world and the challenges that you have for a startup to be successful. And the success of startup success of solving big problem comes from making sure the fund the capital is available and is deployed with a trusted verifiable form so this way new ideas could come into reality and make the world a better place i mean the first person that actually listened to our uh, pitch for the deco is one of the early investors of Revolut. So I told her that, uh, 
you know, I have a business idea that could be as big as Revolut. Of course, you know, I was, you know, uh, exaggerating. I never think like I could do anything at the size of Revolut. But if you solve the finance and you solve the trust, I think people could come together and build a lot of amazing solution. Yeah, perfectly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. next, please. Yeah, uh, the thoughts. Uh, yeah, interesting. I think um, the word trust is, uh, yeah, a lot of that's that's an area where crypto might uh, bring a lot of things into its own. Um, as I said earlier, my uh, my thought processes come out of funding SMEs, not not dealing with consumers, and very much are anchored in my experience in Australia and the area where we touched on, uh, dabbled on fintech, is if you to try and have a fairly simplistic explanation, if we're funding an invoice from A to B, how do we know it's a, a genuine invoice? And there, we don't have a, a, a direct uh, commercial relationship with the ultimate payer, so we can't access their credit information, so it is difficult to establish their credit worthiness. So we are working on a project where we're trying to find ways of using non-financial information to make a financial decision. Um, and that's proven to be quite a challenge. But on the flip side of it, uh, on, on the consumer, when we were talking on the weekend, it, it occurred to me that uh, an Australian company, an Australian listed company, Afterpay is effectively a fintech. And all that is is a very old concept that retailers had called lay-by where you could uh, get, decide you wanted to buy a product and you ask the retailer to put it one side and you paid it off over time, they used technology and flipped it on its, on its head and said you can take the goods now and pay it off over time. Um, and that's proven to be quite a successful business. It got bought out by Square. I looked up the, the numbers after we spoke on the weekend. The, the, the price was $30, $39 billion and they haven't made a profit. <laughs> um, so... The, that's a different uh, world, you know, making a profit and stuff like that. that that's, a, that's a new yeah, world. Yeah. I've, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very old and traditional. I, I, I think turnover is vanity and margin is sanity. <laughs> but, so I think really one question that we, we can have is uh, whether in fintech making profits is possible, whether, you know, or, 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 or doing businesses without profit or fintechs is possible. So we can have views about across oh, that. Absolutely. Look at Amazon. They didn't make money for a long time and look at them now. <laughs> uh, get first mover advantage. Yeah. 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 Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Look, that, that's, that's, uh, I, I think there's a lot more opportunity at the consumer level in, in Asia. And I think it's, it's limited only by the individual's imagination. And to go back to what Cam said, if you can get, uh, use technology to, Establish trust and verification, it will open a lot of doors. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, I agree with everything that's been said. You know, it's um, um, it, when, when you try to, to, to take that concept into, into an Asian one, I think in Asia, the idea is, is there. I think in every, every, every entrepreneur's minds when it comes to fintech, you know, people do have access, people know what's going on, what's, what's new. Uh, uh, in uh, happening in, in in Silicon Valley and elsewhere in China, what's available? I think the idea for each market uh, is to um, to adjust the, the idea into a local one, and that's that's the only way you can you can build trust because I think the users won't be familiar with the new ideas and the the unique brandings that each market has come up with. Uh, the, uh, the 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 role of uh, the fintech players in well places like Japan is to sort of customize the concept that's already been globally available into a local one, so that the consumers will be be you know find it more accessible and more you know familiar and build trust. And that's essentially what the fintech players in Japan are doing, uh, and as as well as um, other countries in Asia, I think, because if you, if you just extract the ideas and what, what we do, um, people would point out the, the equivalent uh, in each country. Oh, we have that in Australia. Oh, we have that in the U.S. We have that in China, which we're, 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 but we're not exactly copying. We're trying to adjust the model 
with the idiosyncrasies of our own market so that the, the users will be you know, more familiar. And, and that's what my company is basically doing, Luca. We, we, we saw what iCapital is doing. We saw what Moonfair is doing. The basic idea was, to, oh, we can do this in Japan. That's, yeah. that's where we're coming from. But from there, you know, there, there's lots of nuances that you have to play around with. The, the, the consumer preference, the branding, regulations. Um, and of course, you have to market those products to the right people. And oh, it's easier to do that here than, than doing that from, from places like Berlin or New York. So it's, uh, it's a little bit about timing. Um, and, you know, I think it's more or less the same for other fintech businesses in Japan. Um, I can always talk, I'll also talk about the banking, um, with, which I think was um, brought, brought up by, I, by, by Kim, Kimball um, in, in the weekend. And I think that that's very relevant when you compare the, the markets inside Asia. But I'll leave that uh, later, uh, topic later. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So the insights are, see, what fin FinTech is trying to do uh, in Asia is uh, Asian markets were very, very cash heavy. Most of them, uh, you know, uh, dependent uh, using cash everywhere to go. So by FinTech, uh, the cash is getting reduced to certain economies. Uh, so the first role I think the FinTech played in, in, in a lot of Asian economies was how not to use cash and not just dependent as one mode as credit card. Because that was the largest mode, you know, when you had the digital payments across. Uh, so, so the first revolution came there, and the revolutions are changing across in terms of lending. Uh, it was always there, but digitization, and it's ensured that the people who didn't have the credit and and who could get credit across on that front, uh, they could add, get value across on that side. So that's how fintech is changing. Uh, there are a lot more uh, Asian, uh, you know, companies which have. Uh, you know, solve this problem for their own ge geographies, uh, especially we see, saw in China, which were their internal uh, people which built giants, uh, you know, okay, with Alibaba and everything across. Uh, in India, Paytm uh, did and fought the international, uh, you know, players like Google and Amazon uh, from a long period of time and just got an IPO, uh, you know, about two, a week ago across. Uh, yeah, so going forward uh, to, to the next gentleman to, uh, yeah, take forward. Uh, may, maybe I can, I can make some comments. Uh, I, I, I think that one complexity definitely with FinTech is that it is so large area. So, so that there are so many different kind of services that we are talking about services like that are basically like full banking service. Then we talk about some very technical uh, details that how something is implemented inside finance services. So, so that they are very much services that are only tech services and then they are more like finance services. And, and then, uh, of, of course, uh, for example, uh, uh, this uh, uh, decentralized model is, is one new dimension and so on. Uh, but if we think the situation in Asia, then another aspect is that countries are very different. So that, or, uh, let's say uh, uh, Japan or Singapore that are very developed market. Most of people are using traditional finance services compared, for example, to Indonesia, uh, the Philippines and uh, Vietnam, where many people are actually outside banking services and the traditional finance services that also make the situation very different. Then, of course, the regulation is something that we can never ignore uh, in uh, finance services so that there are also quite a lot of differences between countries. And it means also that typically it's uh, more difficult in fintech services than in some other tech services. Uh, to to go to a new country because you might need to 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 do something uh, for the local uh, regulation uh, and uh, and then I would say that there are certain political aspects also nowadays with the finance that uh, uh, who who that uh, they they are more more and more governments also interested that who control the finance services in the future. So, so that in, in, in that way, I would say that 
as a whole, I believe that the future of fintech is very significant in Asia. Uh, uh, my feeling is that it can especially change the uh, finance services in those uh, less developed countries when many people have been outside the traditional finance services. But at the same time, there are quite a lot of differences between countries and also what kind of services will be the most important ones. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so regarding the fun, fun tech, um, there are tom- uh, many topics. I still want to go back a little bit about Charles A because that is really a challenge, especially for fintech business in China when you start, you know, there are many things happen. So um, it's very hard to build up a fintech trust. But in the same time, it's very important uh, to have fintech in China. There are so many population. In the same time, there are so many you know, small business or small requirement. So fintech can help people. So how to build up trust? Uh, um, we did something. Actually, uh, um, there are two things in my company because first of thing, um, we have back. I mentioned we have background. We we have a, 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 a company ourselves, and in the same time we have some technology, especially in mental health. So we try to use some uh, mental health software to help people to uh, to analyze this on what they are thinking. Actually, we already built up the system, so we leverage that. This is one thing. The second thing is transparent is what we are doing, uh, trying to do to build up trust. Uh, especially the good thing is, you know, technology can support that, you know, keep that transparent. What do they invest? What do they, you know, they, they get? Everything is very important. The third thing is, um, we, uh, we really leverage our uh, company. Actually, uh, you, you, you really should have some assets that it gives them, uh, you know, uh, trust, some uh, confidence to people. You can trust this company. The last thing in China, something special, you know, we get some, uh, shares, we sell some shares to the state-owned company, you know, that if you uh, leverage you the trust from the, you know, government. So that is something special locally, anyway, that is some experience. Yeah. The other parts is that uh, what we want to discuss with, uh, do you guys see anything, uh, particular countries where you see the adoption of fintech uh, better than others, uh, or you see uh, a company which you can figure it out, which has been born out of Asia and can build or become a world-class number one company across. Uh, so there are these two different parts. Uh, first, I wanted to have your views across. Uh, do you see, because when we see the numbers, there is China, uh, India, Vietnam, uh, any different views you, that you guys have and how do you see, uh, uh, and Japan, uh, sorry, uh, to mention them, how do you see how which which countries are likely to succeed more in fintech? Uh, so the first part of is that, yeah. I'm not sure of which con- I can point out which country will likely succeed in fintech, but up until now, um, it may be interesting to to share with you guys um, the sort of discussion we've had in Japan in terms of the slow pacing of fintech so called revolution in Japan, as opposed to China. So we saw, first of all, we saw the the faster surge of mobile uh, phones in China, and we kind of started to think, you know, why is it the case in China vis-a-vis Japan? Japan was very slow in terms of adaptation of, of mobile phone, and it's because already the landlines were too much available, uh, and the population was not growing rapidly as, as, as in countries like China. So we were slow to, you know, recognize the needs of mobile phone. It came, started from there, and then you had the fintech revolution in, in China, and we didn't see it happening in Japan, we asked, started to ask why. Uh, and th- that is because we the cash was so readily available, people didn't really feel a need to adapt the fintech, um, the fin- fintech technology, fintech service right away. Um, the, and, and also the trust in cash, as opposed to, um, I would say, you know, more criminal uh, countries with, with higher crime rates. So in Japan, holding cash is very safe and very convenient. And bank, you know, we, we have this overbank uh, uh, society here. So we can, you know, um, uh, withdraw cash just about anywhere in any convenience store very, very safely. So there was a very low need of fintech. Plus, we didn't have enough mobile phones around. So the pacing was very, very slow. It's picking up 
especially after the COVID. Um, but we still don't have countries, companies like like Lieka, for example, a QR code reader in China that's been listed in, in, in Hong Kong. We don't have a business like that. It's been taken care of by a big company still. Um, so I think up to now, it's um, interesting to recognize the differences in terms of the spread of fintech in in Asian countries. I think you right. can generalize by saying, you know, c- countries with um, the more established um, financial means uh, have been very slow uh, in adapting this, this, this fintech in, in general. Yeah. Generally, wherever, uh, you know, a revolution starts uh, wherever the need is highest. I think that you pointed, yeah. you know, the, the part of it. Uh, yes. Uh, great. Uh, we have the other views. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with what was said, but no, after you. No. Uh, um, I, I, very, very briefly. Yeah. Yeah, we have some delays, okay, yeah, so that, yeah, yeah, very, very briefly. I think that also needs are uh, different in different countries. Uh, I think that one example is that, for example, Singapore wealth management is one area where is quite a lot new fintech solutions. But then, of course, in in places like Indonesia, Vietnam, the Philippines, it's very much the very basic banking services, lending services for people who haven't got those services earlier at all. So, so that in, in, in that way, uh, I, I, I would say that fintech is happening in many countries, but the needs and uh, use cases are a little bit different. Yeah. So Maybe I also add that, you know, Rishi, instead of countries, maybe it becomes almost like a service that connects countries together. Because if you're isolated, then you will not be able to trade as much as possible with your neighboring countries or globally. So I think the more, it's almost like how you have passport. If you have a passport that opens up to other countries, then other countries will accept you. So I think the fintech is almost like the promise of internet back in the 90s, how we connect people. The future of fintech and perhaps maybe crypto has a role to play here is how people can actually trade together, trust each other, because everything we do is based on trust and based on shared value of mutual interest and profit. When fintech solves that friction, and solves the trust. So by knowing who you're dealing with, then you can order something from one part of the world, just like how, you know, six of us uh, together from different part of the world. This is the future of FinTech, that with one click, we are able to do trade with each other, similar to what Kimball said about Amazon, where we are able to do things that in the past we could have not. Brilliant, yeah, please, yeah, now. Yeah, uh, if I can just add to that, um, I think there's sort of two um, broadly different aspects of, of what we're talking about, and, and uh, without naming uh, specific companies, but, but, but countries like Indonesia, Philippines, Vietnam has been mentioned, maybe some parts of India, I'm not so sure, but where consumers are un- unbanked or underbanked, on th- that's where there's a lot of volume, but <clears throat> where there's a lot of potential is what Cam was just talking about, ways of ensuring trust like uh, fintech is already being used in some parts of Australia, many parts of Australia, for home loan settlements. There's there's no um, no uh, paper uh, uh, title deeds. Uh, there's no concerns of uh, they're eliminating the concern of the wrong person mortgaging a property, an unauthorized uh, borrowing against a, a, a property, and they're using technology to to create that trust. So there's two two different areas. I think there's the consumer side of things where it's volume and, and providing a service, easy, easily providing a service that isn't currently available um, uh, or not easily available, and separately, uh, surety and trust in large commercial, uh, commercial transactions where crypto may or may not be part of that. There you are. 
your views. No, I think fintech is the direction. Um, you know, looking back on the technology development in the past thirty years, from computing technology to internet to today, you know, cell phone, everything. Actually, technology changed your life. So, financial, economic, definitely they will be impacted, and、uh, we cannot avoid. So, what we can do is just to try to solve issues, problems, build up trust. Right way, you know, to help people build up trust. I believe there will some way to do in future. So、uh, I'm very、um, optimistic to look at the future of fintech. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and I think,、uh, if I may,、um, the younger generation have have all significantly less resilience in in using fintech as a, as a, as a financial transaction, whereas、uh, the seniors. Or not?、Uh, I mean, I, I think my, my generation is sort of on the bo- at the borderline. I, I sometimes hear some debates about wh- whether we should trust fintech or not. But and, and if you go to elderly、uh, people like my parents, they don't, they don't even have a mobile. So there, there's huge gap between the re- generation. Like my yeah yeah yeah. The other part is the value add that fintech does to a consumer. Right? If you're able to. Get someone, you know,、uh, two basis point extra as an interest rate. It creates a ripple, right? Even, even,、uh, even for somebody who is who is not used to certain technologies, they still go after it. So, if there is an opportunity that is raised by a fintech by evaluating and giving, maybe I, I just so I, I was giving an example where give two basis point、uh, up the interest rate, people. Tend、uh, start moving to those and start you know understanding the concept and start moving to it. If the evolution or if the value ecosystem is not that great, uh, then uh, it takes、uh, a much longer time for a fintech to succeed or a service to succeed across.、Uh, just putting across on that front is、uh, we've been used to large credit cards and everything, and now buy now pay later,、uh, as we discussed over you know is 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 the darling of. Consumers, investors, and everywhere across on that front, the buy now, pay later, instant credit, where you can be able to have ten thousand, twenty thousand, making use certain merchants across on that front, and it is taking a lot more people in surprise. But the adaptation to it,、uh, what we saw in India, is not just、uh, an eighteen year old or twenty five year old, but it's just that people see it's a ten thousand、uh, rupees of free credit by just clicking few things, they get access to it and they start liking across. So my understanding is when、uh, you know、uh, the the other question that I want to put it to all the function is that、uh, now when uh, uh, when uh, the, uh, the what is the opportunity that you see in a certain segment uh, which which uh, which in in fintech of the、uh, vast world which is most promising、uh, you know、uh, do you see in the next three five years、uh, to be used all across on the world yeah which part of the fintech you see going to grow the highest and why yeah. If I could jump here, what I see, Rishi, is that the future of the world, which belongs to you, as Matteo mentioned, that you know his parents have difficulty trusting the mobile phone, whereas in almost entire Africa, mobile phone is the bank. I think the future generation is solving more complex problem.、Um, I was at COP twenty six in Glasgow, and I saw the movement of how. Countries are being driven by the youth. The youth are making a lot of decision, and the future generation is very fintech savvy. It's like my son the other day created NFT.、Uh, there is this passion in the humanity to rapidly go and explore new opportunities, and I think the traditional financial system cannot keep up with that rapid growth. Of course, you want to put some structure. And create a sustainable, real, you know, world-changing solution. Not just coming in and, you know, making art for the heck of creating art. Coming up with a problem and saying, how can we apply ten thousand mind to solve this problem? That's one of the things that I've seen by some of the events that I've attended. That the future of the fintech is really to solve comp- complex problem, applying capital. To solve it, not just for you know 
talking about it. Rishi, it's very difficult to single out <laughs> which 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 uh, services in fintech is is the most promising. As we speak, I found out through the last weekend's uh, meeting that buy now pay later is is become is picking up in Australia as well as in Japan. I, I said picking up in Japan, but not really picking up. Uh, we we had a company called um, uh, Payday that was bought at two point seven billion dollars by PayPal uh, of all people. Uh, and that company, the page in Japan, has only begun serious operation four years ago, and hasn't made any money yet. And the, the, all the all the news program had to explain what buy now pay pay later, pay later is. So that's how low the penetration is. But that's yeah. one area that's going to pick up. But you know, in, in the long run, I, I see that most of the aspects, probably all the aspects that we um, non digitally transact uh, in the financial industry will be taken over um, by, by, by fintech in one way or another, even private equity. Private equity, I would say, the, is the most manually oriented um, business uh, in, 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 in fintech because it's, because it's a private equity. It's not public, so you don't have the mass, um, critical mass. But still, we have companies like iCapital and we have SP, wow, SPAC, um, where where you can fund M and A transactions, uh, and I can see that you know um, the, the the debt financing will be taken over, um, and you know EKYC as well is coming in 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 many aspects that is very crucial in terms of proceeding private equity f transactions. So if you see something happening in fin in terms of fintech in private equities, I I, I can see it, it's happening in else in, in in almost everywhere else. Yeah, please. Yeah, my, my my quick comment is that I, in near future, I believe more in very targeted services, so that nothing, not service that is going to replace, for example, a whole bank, but what is really targeted for lending or simple things like Stripe is excellent example that it is maybe the most successful uh, fintech service. So, so the targeted services for, for very specific needs. Uh, then over the time, of course, they, they will take over more and more the finance system. I think that the complex question is then with banks, because banks are not only uh, companies, but they are also important institutions in the economy. And uh, that will be very interesting to see that what's go going to happen with, with the banking system. Yeah. Um, I think, um, I still believe in technology really impact. If the, what kind of service from Fantech is promising a personalized thing, first of all, easy to use, very convenient, really change your life. Including when you talk about the Asian people, actually they did try to uh, develop something just controlled by voice different thing. I believe some people we not find, finished yet, but we on the way. I believe maybe not all company, maybe some other people we will develop something good for old people. Otherwise, you know, every generation they will get old. When the new generation comes, new technology. How about the older one? So I believe so um, that will be easy to use even for. Older generation and uh, in the same time dynamic credit build is very important because we have technology to check everything online you know in that case as far as the privacy is protected i think that is helpful for finance to you know dynamic manage the credit yeah great uh originally our time is over i'll just run with one more point and and have views across uh, and would sum it out across on that. And it's a it's a great conversation. And we being part at different times of the world uh, from different countries, we've been able to hopefully add some value to an ecosystem who would see this and, uh, you know, can understand what they think FinTech in Asia would go across across. Uh, just the last point, uh, I want to understand uh, from you guys or have your views across on that front is that do you think uh, governments in Asia uh, regularize stuff more than the US, etc. 
if not what do you see uh, is the optimum uh, you know uh, things required for governments to play part in this uh, in 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 the fintech revolutions across yeah i can only I make that, a that, that's a very hard question to answer uh, yeah. I, i think that the sand, sandbox models make sense in that way that that they a kind of environment where you can test new services and you can see what what happens but i think that history has also demonstrated that many finance innovations can create also many problems so that in in that way it's a kind of balance all the time i completely agree i can only make a comparison between the us and japan um not all asian countries and and you know i can i i do have some views about the difference of regulations within asia but in terms of japan the regulation is very tight just like in any other business in japan uh, and it, it's uh, and and it's not because the government is uh control oriented but it has more to do with the the fast uh that the pacing of the of what or any deregulation that that would happen in Japan so it's very very slow but we do have a lot of transactions with the regulators and you know they they are aware of their slowness and the reason why they're slow is not because um they want to be slow is because of the lack of recognition uh that they they need to be to be faster of course the regulators are aware but not the whole government um so so that's the thing but there's been also an emerging idea that the the evolution of fintech is uh one of the measurement of the competitiveness of of the of the japanese business community so government is very aware and i see that uh, um the 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 momentum has changed in the last 12 months great great yeah please um actually states has much metro system finance and the credit system compare with states you know on um, china asia com- uh, countries we have much you know not as much as the states but my opinion is uh, uh, most time uh, you know new technology revolution always come from uh, uh, some place the current system is not so strong because they have much stronger intention they have lower burden to break through so we could have more opportunity Yes. Please go ahead. Yeah. Any more comments from anyone? Yeah, so I think uh, the time is run over and uh, thank you all for coming in the midnight in the afternoon in a thanksgiving you know in the morning and and everyone I think uh, whatever we could do the best that I think we did uh, were able to put some thoughts across and hopefully it'll add value to others and especially to us uh, we would you know be in touch with each other uh, that'll help understand the market success on that front so i think all of us can connect each other and can exchange notes whenever we want to understand and can take help of each other so the first thing is uh, thank you all for coming and have a great day and great time yeah thank, thank you, you so much. much thank you thank you thank, thank, you. thank you thank you thank you bye thank you bye Thank you. Bye.